Joining us now, Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. She's a member of the Judiciary Committee and chairwoman of the Rules Committee. Uh, boy, so many things I want to ask Thanks, you. But Mika. Susan Collins is shocked and disappointed. Uh, are you as well, and should she be? Well, I'm more than disappointed, um, as you discussed all morning. Uh, this is an absolute outrage uh, for the women of America. But I'm not surprised, because I voted against them. It wasn't just abortion. It was their views on so many things. They gave you a roadmap in those hearings. Now, I will say that in the actual hearings, which you just played, they said things similar to what they must have said to Senator Collins. And it appears mm -hmm. uh, they doubled down on whatever they told her. So I wasn't at the meeting in her office. I don't know what either of them said to her. I just know where we are right now, and that is we must move ahead. And I thought Guy Cecil's remarks about the election on your last panel was so important. This is, Mika, about an election. It is about taking this anger. You know, you always say, uh, don't get mad, vote. I will say, get mm -hmm. mad and vote. It is taking yeah. the anger about how these six people can make a decision for the women of America, uh, because they are pissed. And they are going to vote. And that's what this is about. And I, I, we will do whatever we can in the Senate with our 50-50 Senate, which you know is limited. States, and you'll hear from Governor Pritzker, states across the country, including mine, Minnesota is like an island in a really tough neighborhood when it comes to women's reproductive rights. North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa on our, on our borders, Wisconsin that has a law uh, from before 1850 on the books. So we're going to do what we can. But in the end, this is about November. So uh, I, I know you, you don't want to talk about other senators. I understand yeah. that. But Susan Collins, we just have to talk about the hypocrisy of all of this. She knew what Brett Kavanaugh was going to do. And she can say what she can say all she wants that she didn't know what Brett Kavanaugh was going to do. But if she didn't know what Brett Kavanaugh was going to do, then why did she do a political fundraiser uh, with the head of the Federalist Society? I mean, she, she, she just can't have it both ways. At some point, when you see the chaos that we're going to see in this country, 13 trigger bans already in effect, states all over this country, governors racing to the state capitol to ban abortion, Every senator is going to have to look in the, to themselves and say, this is it. And we just put a vote on about a month ago, Senator Schumer did, um, and it was very clear we didn't get any Republicans voting with us. And so that's to codify Roe v. Wade. So until we change who's in the Senate, regardless of what any individual senator ha says, the question is, are you willing to make sure we codify Roe v. Wade into law, including getting rid of or reforming archaic Senate rules to make sure we protect the rights of the women of this country. That's what this election is going to be about. And we can actually achieve it, as Guy Cecil just pointed out. If we win Wisconsin, we win Pennsylvania, totally doable. And then let's reach out even farther to look at those races in places like Ohio. I think Claire would add Missouri to the list uh, in places mm -hmm. like Florida and North Carolina, uh, where we have two fantastic women candidates running. You add that to our um, incredible incumbents that we've got with Reverend Warnock in Georgia and Catherine Cortez Masto in Arizona and Mark Kelly uh, in um, Catherine Cortez Masto in Nevada and Mark Kelly in Arizona and Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire. We can do this. This isn't some pipe dream. And we can assure yeah. that women across America are going to be making decisions about their own health care instead of some government official or Ted Cruz. You're going to have, again, the situation right now is that a state, uh, a centralized state will compel a rape victim to carry her rapist's You're right, uh, pregnancy uh, to, uh, to have a forced birth. And it's going to be the centralized exactly. state that's doing it. Uh, that, that's, that's about as frightening, I would think, yeah. for most Americans Here you a, go. A, as possible. Yep. And, and yeah, there, there's are the these states. These are the states that don't have exceptions. These states, these darker states here, they don't have exceptions for rape or incest in their proposal. Yeah. That is exactly what so, you're looking at. 
Well, Claire McCaskill, uh, that's Susan Collins' America right there, is it not? Like, she can act shocked and stunned and tell, tell reporters how stunned she is that Brett Kavanaugh is going to do this. But she knew this was going to happen all along. I mean, again, you look, look, look at the fundraising uh, for her last election. She knew. She, she was on Brett Kavanaugh's side. She was on the side of the people. Uh, let's see that map again, Senator. Uh, she's on the side of the okay. people that, 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 that made this a reality. You look at the dark states, Claire, in those states, a 13-year-old girl uh, that's a rape victim, a victim of incest, uh, is, is forced by those states, forced by the centralized state to have a forced pregnancy. Claire, did Susan Collins yeah, really um, not know what was going to happen when she voted for Brett Kavanaugh? Uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't. I assume that she was worried uh, I think Brett Kavanaugh was very clear with her and her his her office, and of course there have been other Republican pr nominated Supreme Court justices who have been supportive of Roe v. Wade, and I do think he lied to her outright in her office. Uh, but you know, let's also talk about Donald Trump and whether we should have been paying attention to Donald Trump. I found it fascinating that Donald Trump over the weekend was saying to people that this was going to be really bad for the Republicans. So, you know, once again, Donald Trump has shown that he doesn't care what kind of damage he does to the country. I don't think for a minute Donald Trump believes abortion should be illegal. Not for a minute does he believe abortion should be illegal. I think most people know that about him. He knows this is a difficult political situation, especially with no exceptions for rape and incest in all of these states. And so him admitting over the weekend that this is bad for Republicans is fascinating since he did it. He did it. No. Uh, this is the Trump court. Exactly. And you know what the Trump court is? The Trump court is five politicians in a row. That's what the Trump court is. Yeah, we have yep. uh, Reverend Al with us, Senator, and she, he, uh, Reverend Al has a question for you. Yes, Rep Senator, okay, great. as, as uh, you and I have worked on several civil rights issues together, and I clearly think you're right that there needs to be a real vote in these key states. But the question is going to be how we mobilize and galvanize that vote for the Democrats. Let's not forget Yes, you have a 50-50 Senate because you had an unusual turnout. The uh, Biden uh, election was the highest turnout in presidential history. How do we get the message to people on the ground that not only are we looking at an archaic, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, move in terms of women's rights, but right behind it, it could be contraceptions, it could be LGBTQ rights, voting rights, civil rights. Once you get this state rights model, everybody is at, at risk here. How do we get everybody to understand that everybody's got to be all in and these fights between who's moderate and who's progressive, who's up, or who's down, really need to go to the side because all of our rights are at stake. Without that, I think we can be right and we could lose if we do not get the message that would energize the vote we saw in 2020, which was an unusual vote in terms of turnout. That's exactly right, Al. And this means taking that energy that we see out there in the marches over the weekend and putting it right to an election. That's why I started this way. That's why I'll end this way. And this is about looking at young women in the eye who can vote and saying, and the men that support them, and saying, you have less rights than your mom or your grandma. That's what I had to tell my daughter this weekend. It is about directly saying, who do you trust to make your own health care decisions? You and your family, your doctor, or some other politician? Um, and it is about then taking that energy and showing them that it can make a difference. And I thought what Claire just said about Donald Trump picking these judges, you put it right to the politics. That's what this is. Amy Coney Barrett actually said that Roe v. Wade wasn't super precedent when I asked him. They knew exactly what they were getting. This was a long-term plan, and we've got to make that point and connect the dots to Donald Trump and the Republican Party, because no matter what people say, they're shocked now about it or they wish they could change it. Well, right now, we are where we are, and this is about a check on that Supreme Court and the way you do it yeah. is with the people. That's how our system of government was set so up.